hey, you're back. I guess you wanted to learn more about chess, maybe. <laughs> All right, so uh, in the last episode, we talked about building out this board and uh, operator overloading. In this episode, we're gonna start building out pieces. So let's talk about how we might build a piece class. So I'm gonna add a new file. I'm gonna call this, oh, should we do pawn? Let's do pawn first. So pawn.rb is gonna be our first piece. So I'm gonna call this class pawn. And there's a couple things that are unique to each piece uh, that uh, in chess, right? One is the types of moves that each piece is allowed to make. So a pawn is the most basic piece. It's on like the front row uh, when you start playing and it is allowed to either move forward two spaces or move forward one space. And so what I think we wanna do is define some sort of like directions that a piece is allowed to move. So move durs maybe is like the move directions. Uh, and then, yeah, let's start with that. So let's say that our, our pawn has some like directions that it can move. So let's make a new method called move durs. And initially we will just make this return an array where each element in the array is um, the directions that it can move. So um, I guess if it can move only in, it can only move in the Y direction, right? Up and down, it can't move in the left and right directions. So I think it can move, um, it can just move forward. And, and to start, let's just say that a, a pawn can only move one step forward. We'll just save the case where it can move two steps because we need a little bit of logic around like, is it at its starting position? And if it is, then like move durs is different. Um, so uh, let's actually, let's let's figure that out. So if, if the pawn is at its starting position, so um, starting, uh, starting position, so maybe starting pause, and we'll say like if, um, ah, interesting. So does it need to have a location? So should each piece maintain reference to its own location? Well, this would be helpful if we were looking at, is it in the starting position, right? So should each piece have its own location? Let's, let's just start off with, um, an initialize method here that has the location. So we'll say at location is location. So maybe we do wanna store the location in each piece. I don't know, we might come back and adjust that. I'm not sure, um, but let's let's just assume that we start off each piece and it maintains reference to its location. That, that way what we can do is we can say, um, we can say, we can actually make a couple of getters here, row and uh, column, column, and we can say column is at location dot last and row is at location dot first. Let's actually put these at the bottom here. And um, then we could say if the row is equal to one or the row is equal to what is gonna be the other side six maybe, um, then it's at the starting location. Um, and I think that will work, right? Because of, oh, let's see, chess, chess board, uh, is a chess board eight by eight, right? Uh, chess board, let's see. Yeah, it's eight by eight. And if it's in the starting, if it's in the starting row on this side, then it's gonna be in position, it's gonna be on the second row. If it's on the, um, the starting position on this side, it'll be on row seven. And what's neat about the pawn is that you might think like, okay, well, um, if, we, if we're using this starting position to define whether or not the move directions is one or uh, if it has more directions, um, then we might run the risk of like, as soon as a pawn starts here and moves its way to the seventh, uh, the seventh row, then it will also be able to move two spaces forward. But once it gets to the seventh row, it can't move two spaces forward anyway. So it's kind of like a little bit of a accidental nice thing. Um, so what we want is we want the move directions to return this unless it's at the starting position, in which case we want it to move, we want it to return uh, like zero and two, I think. Um, or maybe we should have like valid, hmm. All right, I'm sort of figuring this out on the fly, sort of th figuring it out on the fly. So the move directions, it can move in that direction, but 
we also want it to be able to move in that direction like a certain number of steps. Um, all right, let's let's save that and come back because we'll we'll need to like do a little bit of logic here to figure out what we need beyond beyond these move directions uh, in order to make it step only one forward or or uh, multiple forward. Let's make another piece and just kind of. Uh, one of the things that we might want to do, or what what you should do is when you're um, building object-oriented code, is to um, wait to merge things into a parent class or into a module until you have several where it's like very very clear that you want to dry things up. So dry is uh, don't repeat yourself. D R Y. Don't repeat yourself. So we don't want to we don't want to like dry up the code too quickly. So let's add another file here. We'll call this one, um, I don't know, uh, rook.rb. And a rook is going to be class rook. And a rook is, what is a rook? A rook is the piece that can move up and down, right? Let's see, uh, chess rook. Um, yeah, so this is, the, this is the rook piece. And the rook is um, the piece that is allowed to move on the chessboard either uh, it can go up and down or it can go left and right, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna say uh, def move ders, and we want the names of the methods to be the same across all pieces. And the move ders for a rook is gonna be, uh, we can either move in the zero one direction, same as pawn, or we can move in the one zero direction, which is X and Y, right? So like the, if we were able to move in, um, I guess you know what we could also move in uh, zero. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's four directions technically that we can move in. So this gives us the forward direction. We also need to be able to move in the backward direction. That's like going down. So we can go negative one, and then we also have um, this one is going to go right, and then this one will go left. So these are all the the directions that a rook can move. Um, and let's see. So the other thing that we wanted is probably like some string representation of what the class looks like. So one thing that we could do, right, is if we have a pawn here, let's let's uh, require the pawn here. Um, so we'll say pawn and let's do the same thing with rook. And then we'll comment all this out and say like uh, uh, p is pawn dot new. And then if we say puts p, then that's going to be like the the representation of the pawn is going to be this. This is going to be the string representation of the pawn. And I've got some issue here in rook. So I'm looking at this error message. And when I look at the error message, I am seeing, uh, I, I want to look for the line where the error happened. So I see home runner chess lib rook. So I know that it's in the rook.rb file. And then this colon here, the colon tells you which line number it's on. So I know exactly where I need to look in, in the rook class on line eight. So I'm going to go to rook line eight and I see that there is no comma here. And so that is probably the issue. All right. Initialize wrong number of arguments. Oh, we didn't pass anything in. Let's say the location is zero, zero, and then we'll print out puts P. All right. So this is right now the string representation. It says like the class name colon. I think this is like the memory address. It doesn't really matter, but like, uh, this is definitely not what we wanted to print out like probably when we when we display the pawn. So when we call put puts or put s, this is gonna this is actually calling dot two s under the under the hood, right? So if we call puts uh, p dot two s, we're getting the same exact re result back. Now if we say p, um, oh gosh, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so it still worked. Okay, so p is a method. I don't know how this is how it knows, um, even though I over I sort of overwrote it, but here we go. So uh, p pawn dot two s. So you can see the quotes around it. This is the string representation. What we can do is we can actually override two s. So we can say def two s, and we can make this whatever we want. And I think there might even be a pawn class in. Nice. So there's a pawn class in the um, emojis. <laughs> All right. So now if we run this, we should get back the little pawn. It should print out a pawn. And it totally does. Okay, I think there might even be like a color. So there's like, yeah, okay. So there's a black one and there's a white one. Um, and we need to figure out like what color the piece is. So we might also take that in color. 
So we can say at color is equal to color. And then we can say like if color is equal to um, black, then we want to print that string. Otherwise, we want to print this string. So this is a, a ternary operator. Um, and I'm comparing it with a symbol. OK, so now what 2s is doing is it's, it's evaluating the, this expression on the left first. And it's saying, is the color um, or is at color? So we need an adder reader for color. So is the color black, the symbol black? And if so, print out this thing. Otherwise, print out this thing. OK, so why am I using a symbol here instead of something else? Like we could, we could have just as easily used a string or something else. The nice thing about using a symbol is that uh, internally, when you're running the program, there's only going to be one instance of that symbol. Otherwise, um, like every time we reference this string here, it's going to create a new instance of a string. So it's just a little bit memory, um, a little bit more memory efficient to use a symbol instead of a string when we're going to do comparisons like this because it doesn't need to allocate a brand new string object to do the comparison. We're getting like two into the weeds. Don't worry about that. Let's go back to our board or back to main, and we'll pass in black here, and then we'll we'll make another pawn here that's like uh, white. And then we can print both of those out and we'll see if it prints out the black one and then it prints out the white one. Okay, so that's gonna be our black pawn. That's gonna be our white pawn. And where this gets really cool is that we can say like, we can call B equals board.new. And then we can say like B at index um, zero, zero is equal to this new pawn, which is black, right? Actually, or maybe uh, one zero, and then we can do the same thing for like one one, one two, one three, and then when we print out the board, we can say whoops, um, p uh, b dot grid, and then we should see those on the grid. And we don't because we are using P, which is inspect. So if we say puts b.grid, okay, we're gonna need to figure out how to make our board print out like in a, in a square here pretty soon. Okay, so we do, we definitely see those black, those black pawns. Uh, and if we make one of them white, then we're gonna see some black and some white pawns or one white pawn here at the bottom and we do. All right, so let's, um, that's okay, that's fine. This, this is working well for now, I don't, I don't know, I'm not like 100% sold that we need to pass the location in, but let's just keep going. We're gonna want our, uh, our initialize meth here, our, our initialize method here to take in the color. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna remove the location from pawn. Oops, what is this? Got it, files, pawn. I'm gonna remove the location here and we'll come back and work on that later if needed. Uh, I think the location, we should just store it on the board. Um, and so we'll only pass in the color. So we're gonna take our pawn, it's gonna have a, an adder reader for color. And that's going to be what we receive. Um, and then we're gonna store that as an instance variable, color is color. Um, all right, so we've got sort of the directions of these pieces. Let's, uh, let's get another piece built here. Add a file for a knight, okay. So class knight. And this thing is going to be, let's see, actually, yeah, we can just kind of like grab pawn and drop it into knight. We have the same color. This is gonna be now the black knight and the white knight. So we have knight, all right, oops. Nope, that's not it, oops. Um, the black knight and the white. The white, oops, knight, the white knight. Okay, the knight is the, the horsey, the horse. <laughs> okay, so the directions that a, a knight can move in. So a knight can move in four directions. It can move uh, in the L shape, I think, right? So uh, maybe it might be more than four even. So it can move like one, two, or um, what else can it move? It can move two, one and it can move um, 
the combos of those, so... And I think that gives us all of our possible moves um, for a knight. And for now, we're just hard coding them. There's probably clever ways to like make some sort of array method that ends up like printing these out, but um, keeping it super simple for now. All right, so we've got our knight. What else do we want? We want to add a file for king.rb and We'll say class king. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's right. Okay, cool. Uh, whatever. All right, we've got our king. What else do we need? We need a bishop, and the bishop is similar to the rook except that the bishop is going to go diagonal instead of um instead of left and right and so i believe this one only has four and it's going to be yeah fantastic all right so we've got our colors we've got okay bishop what are we missing we're missing one oh the queen of course the queen, add a file, queen.rb. And the queen is able to move in all the directions that a king, uh, the rook can move and the, the directions that a bishop can move. Copy those into queen and add these here. So actually, I think a queen and a king can move the same the same directions. Let's just copy from king. We also need, I noticed I didn't have, uh, one of our pieces doesn't have a 2s yet. All right, so queen. Um, oh, that'd be fun, right? To do like a colored emoji. All right, uh, okay. Uh, queen and okay. And we've got all the movedurs. All right, so let's go back through this. We've got a bishop, we've got a board, we've got a king, we've got a knight, we've got a pawn. We've got a queen and we have a rook that doesn't have any 2s. So let's finish this out. All right. I don't know if I'm going to speed this part up. I might speed this up. We'll see. Okay. Whew. All right. So at this point, what I think we want to do is um, improve our board class. So I think we, I, I don't know, like at this point, we've set up our pieces. We want to improve our board class so that it's actually set up with the pieces in the right positions and it's printed out so that it looks like reasonably okay when it prints out and not just in a line and not just like sort of in with the inspected pieces in it. So that's what I think we're going to do in the next episode. But uh, thanks for sticking with, with me through this episode. I think we might also potentially break out um, and add some logic to the pieces for are they sliding pieces or are they stepping pieces? Well, and like, what are the valid moves that are available for a given piece for a given position or something? So uh, come back and we'll do that in the next one. Um, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're finding this valuable. If so, I would really appreciate a quick like, maybe even a subscribe if you will. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.